Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to do some horse racing for today, uh, Saturday, September 24th. For those that followed yesterday, we hit a really nice uh, 10 to 1 morning line winner, um, and a couple of other pretty good ones, actually. Uh, not bad. Um, again, I'm really not going to make a big deal of, of, of the history of my history of horse racing, uh, a horse racing gambling career, or whatever. Just if you know who I am, you'll know that you should probably uh, be listening to what I'm saying. How about that? And, uh, for true DFS members, it's totally free. And actually for everybody that's following this YouTube channel, it's totally free for now. I just don't know exactly how to charge for it. So you guys are getting the benefit of it. And you're also getting the benefit of the fact that it's uh, it's kind of a slower DGen Saturday because there's no MMA today. Um, and whenever there's nothing that I'm kind of planning for, it creates a little bit of time that I can do something else. So I'm going to uh, give you my, uh, my top values for the tracks that I happen to have looked at today. Uh, again, as long as, you know, as long as we're at a stage where giving this stuff out doesn't affect my price, I really have no problem doing it. I guess the best way you can thank me if you want to do that is uh, if you haven't signed up for True DFS already, to go ahead and do that. Um, we do we do actually provide some really good fantasy sports uh, content over there. So uh, I would I would sign up for that. And if you want to if you played horse racing already. If you want to play on S XB Select, this is just the place I have a soft spot for. I've been playing on this site for like 20 years and um, at least actually. Um, and uh, you sign up there. I think you get some some bonus. I don't even know what it is, but you use promo code TrueDFS. Um, but aside from that, uh, let's just kind of get into it. I'm not going to get into all the details, but how I come up with, with these selections. But again, the usual disclaimers. I would not bet until five minutes to post at the earliest because you want to know what price you're getting and you do need to be somewhat price sensitive, which makes, which makes doing these videos a little bit tricky because I don't know exactly what these prices are going to be. So I'm going to give you some kind of guidelines of what I think uh, represents good value. And again, uh, horse racing is big variance and especially the way I play. So it's, you know, it, it, in the long run, you're going to win following the stuff, but the, you know, the long run could be, of course, 75 years after your grandchildren have died. So we'll just see how it goes. Um, before I forget, I want to deal with the Woodbine last race first, and then we're going to go to the full cards at Parks, Aqueduct, Gulfstream, and Charlestown, actually. Um, I didn't expect to do this much, and as a, as, a, as a result, it's going to be somewhat longer video than normal. You know, hopefully, it better be within half an hour, because I have to leave for somewhere in about 40 minutes. So before I forget, Woodbine race 10, um, uh, I, I think the five at five to one is clearly the most likely winner over say the four and the 11. And if you want to use some other long shots, I think the one, the two, the three, the nine and the 10 are all, are all very good. So if you wanted to play that, you know, that, that E five or some trifectas or something like that, I think that, I think you could toss the, um, the four and the 11 I mean, they have the chance, obviously, but I think as far as value goes, I think that you could probably get rid of them and play those other, you know, those other bombs that I mentioned. That would be, again, the, the one, the two, the three, the nine, and the ten. But I do think the five is the most likely winner. And that's the only race I looked at at Woodbine, and I would forget if I didn't take care of that first. All right. Um, let's now go to Gulfstream Park today. Uh, Gulfstream Park, uh, again, I'm going to blast through the races I don't like. Uh, Race one, nothing. Uh, race two, uh, I wondered if the two and the seven could beat the three. It's probably not a good betting race. Third race, definitely not a good betting race. So the fourth and the fifth race are, are kind of the nuts. Okay, I think the five and the seven are clearly the two most likely winners. And they are the maybe fourth and sixth choices out of seven races, seven horses. So I would be all over these guys uh, if it, if the prices anything resemble this. So I would box them in exact as I bet the biggest one to win. I might even do the other one to win, uh, depending on price. But these two are clearly the good values. And, and even it stinks that the first three races did not kind of live up, you know, because I would want to, I would want to hook those up with race four and maybe the pick five or something. But that's okay because race five we have another incredible value spot here. So you have the six Sweet Pearl and the 10 um, Kentucky Pride. Both of these horses are just maybe not exactly as likely to win as the two favorites, but really close enough that I think these two horses are extremely, extremely strong. 
Um, I would <laughs> you put if you put a two dollar bo exact the box these two they could pay like a thousand, you know, uh, if if it, obviously if it comes in, and you could put either of them to win, and if you want to be really nasty, you could play like daily doubles with that fourth race. You know, use the five and the seven with the six and the ten, and that could pay like a, a lot. <laughs> Let's put it that way. How how often is it going to come, come in? Probably once out of sixty times or something, but it's going to pay like five hundred for two, so it's it's definitely good value. Um, you know, it's going to take a long time to realize that value, but who knows? Maybe it's today. All right. Race number six. Um, another pretty good, pretty good value shot here. Laker Mamba at, at 15 to one. I have him rated just a little bit worse than the three favorites, the three, five, seven, which means that the one is extremely good value. Even anything approaching 15 to one, even maybe 10 to one, I would take a shot. So to follow along here, I mean, if you want to bet like a pick three, like race four, the five and the seven with race five, the six and the 10 with race six to one, it's a very small wager and it's probably going to lose. But if it wins, it's going to pay zillions and, and it definitely has a shot. I'll just put it that way. Um, all right. Race seven, uh, nothing really. I mean, the six, the nine and the 10 are the three horses that have run really. And the rest are basically first time starters. So I, I really don't want to get into that race. Race eight, no value at all. Race nine. So again, I think there are two horses that can win. One of them is the 10 at two to one. And the other is the three at 15 to one. So uh, I would bet the three. I would box the three and the 10. But the three at 15 to one is extreme value. Race number 10. Uh, nothing really. I think the one, three, four, pretty solid. Nothing. Prices aren't so great. But then you get to race 11. And I think the three is an, ex it's just an insane bet at 15 to one. Uh, I think the four and the nine are, you know, probably just as likely to win whatever, but the three again, at 15 to one is just obscene. So um, right off the bat at Goldstream, you have a bunch of bombs. If any of them come in, we're already ahead for the day and maybe for a whole week, but um, that's uh that's why I like a Goldstream really, really good betting card. All right. Um, now we go to Aqueduct, and you might get confused. For whatever reason, the marketing team at Aqueduct are calling it Belmont at the Big A because Belmont's closed for the next six months. So they're running it at Aqueduct, but they're calling it Belmont. It's just kind of ridiculous. Let's go through it. Uh, race one, very, very chalky. Um, um, you know, I think the one and the six are going to come in, come in one, two, but they're going to be, they're going to be, they're going to be favorites. Race two, no value. Race three, no value. Race four, no value. Race five, I actually like kind of a cold exactly here. Um, well, I do like the one a little bit better than the four, and the four is going to be chalky. So I would bet the one on top of the four. It's not going to pay all that much, but that's kind of what I wrote there. Um, race six, not much. Race seven, I was trying to come up with a way that the five could beat the three, but I couldn't. But what that means is that I could bet the three, five cold exactly. So in the five is a very legitimate 15 to one to get second, but I don't think it's going to, to win the race. Uh, nonetheless, though, I do think you should bet the three on top of the five. Um, race eight, nothing. Race nine, nothing. Race 10, nothing. And race 11, nothing. So couple, you know, couple, a couple of decent ones there at Aqueduct. Um, moving on to parks, uh, which is Pennsylvania Derby day. Uh, we'll take a look at all the races, see what I wrote down race one. Uh, I think the 12 is kind of a lock at seven to two, but I wouldn't bet at seven to two. If that makes any sense. Um, I think he wins it probably about 25%, 30% of the time, which is makes it the most, most likely winner, but I probably wouldn't bet it. If you want to know the truth race two, um, Nine, ten, and twelve, but not really worth betting. Race three, race three. I thought the four was the legitimate long shot. So the four Vikram, I kind of like on top. And then there's all kinds of stuff you could play underneath. One, six, seven, nine, ten, twelve. It's a big card with a lot of horses today. Um, in any case, I do like the four Vikram in race three. Race four, I thought the five was probably a lock um and then the nine and second so really not 
really a good betting race there. Um, the fifth race, I had the two as a good value to beat the favorite four and six. I, I made them all pretty much equal, maybe the two slightly worse, which meant to me that the two, however you want to pronounce this, Keith Shenda, Shen Shello, uh, I like him at a uh, pretty good six, seven, eight to one, something like that. Um, race six, uh, thought the eight was a lock, but I thought the four could get second. Um, so eight, four, if that exact, you know, pays about 30 or 40, take a shot at that one. All right. Race number seven, uh, some good value here. I think the five and the eight, um, good kind of, I call them middlers. The two is, you know, going to be really, really chalky, but I think the five and the eight are, are, are worth taking a shot at maybe box the two of them and hope the two doesn't run. So I think that's pretty decent, the five and the eight. Right. Um, moving on, race number eight. Race number eight, I have the, it's a mile and a half race. So it's a lot of variance involved in this one. You have three turns, but I think the two and the five are pretty good values here, both at eight to one to beat the very, very favored eight horse. Um, so that's what I would do. I would take the two and or the five, maybe box them. All right. Um, Race number nine, let's see. Um, I put down the four, seven. Okay, so I think the four, seven are pretty good. I mean, the four is four to one. That's fair enough. The seven to 10 to one is almost as good. So I would box the four and the seven, use them both in whatever hookups you want and doubles and stuff like that. And I don't really like much of anything else that race. Um, race number 10, uh, of the two and the, no. Okay, so race 10 is bombs away. So they're, couple of ways you can go with this but i will just say that i think the 12 at 10 to 1 is extremely strong as is the 8 at 12 to 1 um i like the 8 and the 12 and then some others underneath like i think the 2 the 3 the 8 excuse me the 9 the 11 the 14 i mean all of them can get in there but i think that clearly the top values are the 12 and the 8 um, race number 11, uh, no value here. Race number 12 in the Pennsylvania Derby. I think it's pretty chalky. I think the one, five, eight are very legitimate favorites here. If you wanted to take a shot for something to get into the trifecta or the exacta, I think the 10 Naval aviators got a shot to get in there. And then race number 13, uh, no value at all. And to close it out, let's go all the way. If you're still, if you still have any money left, if you're still not broke from the rest of your day, if you're happen to be awake or, or not going out to dinner and you want to do something at Charlestown Racetrack, race at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, race one, nothing. Race two, nothing. Race three, I like it. I like four motivated speaker at 15 to one. And the eight bloke at six to one, I think the two of them are are very, very strong values. So again, uh, you need, if you lost everything, all your money on the rest of my picks and you need to get out, you could try four and the eight. And then race four, uh, I think the three, five and seven are all pretty, pretty strong values. I don't think the one and the four necessarily need to win. So again, you want to do like daily doubles with race three and four, you go four, eight with three, five, seven. I think that's pretty reasonable. Race five, I think, is pretty chalky. One, four, five. You don't have to bet that. But race six, if, if you didn't like any of that and you just are, lost all your money, I mean, like everything, like all your sports betting, all your DFS, everything. There's not much DFS before then. And you need something. You could go with Night Train Wayne, the three horse at church at charged Charlestown, four and a half furlongs at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. And if you're up and playing this, you are you will get my award for pure degen of the day, and I will probably be joining. Um, but I do like that horse. I think he's very, very strong, very strong value here. I think that the favorite is fair enough, but I think that Night Train Wayne is certainly a bit of value. And uh, that's pretty much going to do it. Uh, wait, one more. I'll, get, I'll give you one more. And if that didn't work, and like you have literally no money, if you have to borrow from your buddy, like another $2 to maybe get out for the day. In race seven at 10 o'clock at night, two bit kids, okay, at two to one. But if you want to, uh, listen, you got to go for a long shot, right? 
charitable visit at 20 to 1. I don't know if it's going to win. I don't know if it's got a chance to beat the seven. But at the very least, you could put it in in, in the in the example, right? So hopefully that was uh, it. Uh, hopefully that's uh, wasn't too long. I guess I blasted through it. Oh my god! In only 15 minutes and plenty of time to make my hair cut. Next time you'll see me, I'll be much more uh, much more uh, clean cut. All right, that will do it. Good luck, everybody.